sorry to disturb your beauty sleep. It was either this or play court jester at home farm. Sorry, Oakwell Farm. It's under new management. That's all, Chris. Mine. I thought we'd meet later to discuss changes. If you don't mind, I haven't yet had breakfast. We had an agreement! It was all in your head, Chris. No, no. You made me look a fool. Well, that's as maybe. We'll talk later. doing you any good. Why, am I due for the old hefo? Let me remind you, I am still a shareholder. Fine. Now please go or I will have to have you removed. How? Him? I don't think that'll be necessary. Go home, Chris. Coach is here to see you. Well, if you've had your breakfast, I thought we might go for a jog. I'm busy with this, mate. Oh, we've got rugby final tomorrow. Nothing too strenuous. I thought maybe just a gentle trot. Yeah, I thought rest might be in order, Terry. What? From what I've heard, young Will here, wouldn't you, that semi? Bound to turn it out of him a bit, innit? One man doesn't make the team. Keep your nose out of it, Marlon. I know what's best for Will. A jog? Yeah. I thought maybe, you know, a pat on the head. Well done. Thanks for putting us in the final, etc. I've said all that. You didn't, actually. Doesn't matter, though. Congratulations. You played a blinder. Satisfied? Come on, Will, get your trainers on. Look, I'm feeling a bit groggy, to tell the truth, mate. I think it's to do with Marlon's coffee. Thanks very much. OK, forget the jog. Let's talk diet. Look, fresh veg. Marlon, you cook it, make sure he eats it. Fruit, you need your vitamins. Ha, I'm sorry to be hard on you, Will, but if I didn't think you had it in you, I wouldn't be wasting my breath. I'll be back to check on you later. <laughs> uh, the next time you make your coffee yourself. OK. I hope you know I've got work to go to. Oh, I love you, Lisa. If we get there soon, we get a good pitch. What is all this? No maddy stuff for Jumble at Village Hall. Oh, huh? Don't do that, Uncle Zach. He'll make a mess. Well, what's the crack, then? You just turn up and flog, like? Well, oh, yeah. Once you give the vicar a fiver. A fiver? To ask the cash? It's the payment for your stall, Uncle Zach. Once you made five quid, you're into profit. I'll get the rest of the stuff. Oh, Lord knows, and I'll get to my garage. Lisa, Lisa, love. Why don't you just give your garage a miss today, eh? Put your feet up. Zach, I've only just moved into the garage, but if you really want to help me, you can do me a favour. What, though? Stay away. I've got a lot of work on. I need to concentrate. Yeah, and do I stop you? You divert me. I've got one eye on you and one eye on job. <laughs> Dad, where's everyone going? Oh, some jumbo silent village. Oh. Operation D's or some. Two problems. Problem one, what to put it in. Problem two, how to get Lisa out of the way so that we can empty the tank at her garage and put it in, well, whatever we're going to put it in now, are you, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, good lad. I meant no, Dad. Why are you reading that? No idea. Old habits die hard, I suppose. Yeah, well, we're going to have to learn a whole set of new habits. How to live without money, for a start. You'll kill me for saying it, but last night I slept like a log. <laughs> First time in ages. Lucky you. Relief is that Tara got this place and not Chris. If he'd have got it, the man is banged up for fraud. Uh, poor old Chris. Always the nearly man. So what do we do now? Get on the right side of Tara. <laughs> Let's face it, she prefers me to Chris. We enjoy disliking each other. Yeah, but what about me? Do I cultivate Tara too? Uh, you behave yourself. For better or worse, remember? Mm hmm Weather the storm, Steve. Things might get better. Yeah. Come on, you walkies. I'm going to show you what's left of your inheritance. I wanted to find out what was in her head. I can't believe I was so stupid. You've still got a fifth of the estate, Chris, so have I. We're no worse off. Oh, I will be. When Lady Muck gets rid of me. I bet she was in league with Kim. I'm sure. 
Anything is possible. Not that you'd lift a finger to stop it. Meaning what? Well, you've hardly backed me up in all this. What would you like me to do? Go up to Oakle Hall and smash all the windows? It's Dad's legacy. Tate Holdings gone for good. <sighs> you're not talking about Dad's legacy. You're talking about yourself. Wallowing in self-pity because Lady Tara has got one over on you. And you. Yeah, well, if you want to talk about Dad, think how he would have reacted. Oh, yeah, right. They wouldn't have done it to him. No. You're not Frank Tate, Chris. You never will be. And perhaps that's a blessing. Now, there you are, girls. <laughs> I shouldn't be here, you know. Oh, don't be daft, Lisa. The way you helped yourself this morning, you deserve a cuppa. Hey, I'm open to get off myself. Going to jumble sale. Is there a queue outside? Yeah, I have biddies with big bags, yeah. <laughs> Professional jumblers. You always get them, don't you? <laughs> hey, I could give you a lift selling. Uh, Zoe will be miffed. You should be at college today. Oh, come on, man. I'm great on the old sales pattern. Look, I'm just having this cup and then I'm off. Now, Cathy won't be in this morning because Alice is still feeling poorly, so she's taking her to the doctor. Oh, hey, nothing serious, I hope. Well, I told her no, but it seems she still wants a second opinion. Uh, uh, Betty, um, why don't you give Cathy a ring? Tell her to take that whole day off. Eh? Uh, we can cope. After all, uh, Alice is her priority. What are you up to? Oh, come on, if you can't help a friend in need, what you say? Mm. Ah, Marlon, I hope you're feeling strong. Strong? Yes. Got a job of work to do. There you go. What are you doing here? Oh, smell the cup of tea, didn't you, Uncle Zach? Uh, well, hey, you should have some scones with that lot. Hey, uh, Betty, some scones over here, love, right. please. Right. Zach, I haven't got time for that. I've got to get to my garage. Please, love. Indulge me just once. <laughs> A scone for you alone would send me home like a dog with a bone. Oh, that's lovely. You can't go now, Lisa. Oh, well, if you're feeling poetic, I'll stop. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Where are these going? The village hall. Uh, pictures first, then the furniture. Go on, go on. Hurry up. Sorry. Are you going to tell me or what? What? Why you gave Chris Tate the bum's rush? Oh, you'll find out sooner or later. I now own the majority holding in Home Farm. Chris was rather miffed because he wanted it. Uh, just a minute. Are you... Are you saying that you're the boss up there now? Yes. Fun, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. But what are you doing here? You should be up at Home Farm sorting the Tates out. Oh, no hurry. I fancy a game of pool. Tell the chaps we're next on. Listen, didn't catch you, did you? You played a blinder this time, Dad. Any trouble with the pump? No, it worked a treat. I didn't spill a drop. And Lisa won't even know I've been in that garage. Great. Let's have a look what you've got. Ta da! Whoa. Every one of them chopped up with diesel. Yeah. Now, how much is diesel? Uh, well, well, let's say whatever it is, uh, divided by so many litres per gallon. Plus corkage, spillage, fillage. Five or a throw, what do you say? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Get out. Where's the knives and forks? Sorry? When that wine bar stuff? Oh, things must be really bad, Eric, if you're selling off all your assets. None of that stuff is for sale. It's here for safekeeping, so keep your mitts off. You're taking up too much space, Mr. Pollard. This is Raybolt coming in here with a decorated plate. Come on, Marlon, come on. You know, it's like it was agreed ages ago that I could continue storing my antiques in here. We didn't say how much. It's only a few tables and chairs. Exactly, for my goodness sake. I was referring to cash, Mr. Pollard. <laughs> Shall we say another £40? Pounds? What? A week. 
Here, look. Get a load of this. Uh, worn only once at Buckingham Palace Garden Party. Worth ten of anyone's money, if you ask me. Zoe! Have you seen this nice chiffon scarf? Just, just feel the texture. Can I help you? Uh, just browsing. Oh. Zoe, it was my idea. I know she should be at college, but... I hope you have a good excuse, Kelly. I couldn't face it, Zoe. My dad, he's been awful at home. If I find so much as a scratch on any of my stuff in there, I'm going to pull you so far through your dog collar you're going to be wearing it as a belt. Pleasure doing business with you, Mr. Pollard. Yeah. Betty, I've left Alice with Rachel. No, you should have stopped at home, like I told you. Doesn't matter, I'm here now. Closed. Why? Don't go in there, Cathy. I couldn't stop him, love. This Hi. better be good. I'm calling the police. Hi. Uh, how's Alice? Oh, yes, I meant to ask that. <laughs> yeah, me and How all. can I possibly do business with no furniture? You've stripped the place bare. I'm merely replacing my furniture when all is said and done, it is my furniture. We have something more suitable. Don't worry, you'll be compensated. No warning. I turned my back for five minutes and you pulled another one of your stunts. Well, I couldn't tell you, could I? You weren't here. Anyway, you had enough to worry about with Alice. Hello, home farm. Yes. Right. I'll pass it on. Hello. Hello. She hung up on me. Who? Tara. She wants a meeting here at two o'clock. <laughs> What's it to do with us? I don't know. But we're invited. Plus Chris and Zoe. Coming at you, Diesel. Five star, super plus diesel. Come and get your diesel. You pair are just wasting your time. It's cheaper than that at the garage. Shove off, Mandy. You're queering our pitch. Well, I bet you've not paid the vicar five pound, have you? He's gone to lunch. I'll see him when he gets back. Roll up, roll up. Come and get your diesel while stocks last. It's only natural you should want to know about your real mother, Kelly. It doesn't mean you're being disloyal to Viv. Well, my dad reckons I am. I know he's got pictures of her. He keeps them hidden away, but I've seen her. And we'll ask to see them again. But broach the subject delicately. Yeah. Look, well, I've got to go. Take care. The Otis Diesel in Otten. Mr Dingle. I don't think I've had your contribution. Uh, fair the man, Butch. Yes, Thank you. But I notice that this is combustible fluid. Oh, ah, yeah. Very combustible is that. Fly a spitfire on it. <laughs> Contravenes our fire regulations, I'm afraid. What fire? Can you see a fire, Butch? Oh. Fire is what I'm trying to prevent, Mr. Dingle. I'm sorry, I feel I must err on the side of caution here and ask you to remove all this. Oh, Mrs. Clay. Indrin Free Enterprise. That's what he's doing. Oi, I might just call the Department of Fair Trading. Not before I've called the police and the fire brigade. Out, Mr Dingle, there's a good chap. Out? We've just paid you a fiver. You bought store space, you're free to sell whatever you like, provided it's within the law. This isn't. Out, or I'm on the phone. If you offer violence, Mr Dingle, I shall be forced to defend myself. Fair enough. Police? Magistrates? Court? Newspaper headlines? Leave it, Dad. Good advice, Mr Dingle. 
Back on the van with it, Butch. Back on the van? Why didn't Tara ring me? Well, maybe she did. Steve just happened to pick up the phone. I suppose you had a good snigger about me for this morning's performance. Performance? At Oakwell Hall, don't pretend you don't know. Well, I know I heard a car skidding to a halt around 8 o'clock. Must have been you returning from Tara's. This meeting's another carve-up, isn't it? I'm out of my ear and she wants you there as cheerleader. Look, whatever humiliation you've suffered, you've brought upon yourself. I could have told you not to trust Tara. But you didn't. Like you didn't tell me what Steve was up to before the wedding. Well, it's all water over the dam, Chris. Whatever changes Tara intends making, I am powerless to prevent. And so are you. Two o'clock. You can't be serious. What? Functional? Practical? And tacky. Drag your own business down if you want to, Eric, but I still have standards. Well, there is an alternative. You buy your own furniture for the tea rooms, but of course you'll have to remove that by six o'clock to make that room for us. That is ridiculous. When... Excuse me. Do I bring the rest in or what? No. Cathy doesn't like it. I see no reason why we have to offend her further. My cake table. Where is it? What? I can't believe this. Closed down because my customers have nowhere to sit. Only it had three very nice fancies on Oh, shut up, Betty. Yes, shut up, Betty. Can't you see Cathy's got enough problems? Your silly cake table doesn't even enter into the equation. My cake table isn't silly. Oh, it's safely in store. You want me out, don't you? How could you say such a thing? Do you know what that does to me? To be wrongly accused of having a... Hidden agenda? Hidden, Eric? I'm surprised you're not wearing a sandwich board. All right, Cathy, Cathy, let's just cool our tempers a bit. Please, let Marlon bring in the rest of the furniture. We'll open immediately. You go home to Alice. I'll cover the rest of your shift. Go home with her. Make sure she relaxes, sir. Uh, make her a nice cup of tea and take care of Alice. Go on. No, I've got another four hours to do here. I'll cover that in the compensation. Come on, Betty. If I don't get out of here quick, it'll be me who needs a doctor. Uh, covering Cathy's shift, paying Betty for note, eh? You've gone soft, Derek. Bring in the rest of the stuff. We'll be cooking burgers by three o'clock. Come on. Unbelievable, isn't it? Even polished my shoes this morning. I'm trying to impress her. She didn't even turn up, did she? The place even smells different. I've seen Kim this morning. She just looks the same. Steve, though, seems to have shrunk, man, I'm telling you. It's unbelievable. Don't tell me you're feeling a bit sorry for the tits, right? I like it's change, Biff. Nobody likes change. I'm a heck feeling sorry for them. Well, Chris don't look too happy for himself, does he? No, he's just been staying at off his wall all morning. I had to go home and speak to him once. What about? No, I'm just trying to make sure I'm not dead. Who skived off college then? So we give you a rollicking? Not really. How'd you do with Mandy? Great. She gave me a tenner. You still should have gone to college. Oh, listen, your mum rings. Bring the phone through, will you? My mum can't ring, Dad. You know what I mean, love. Viv. Well, tell me about my real mum. Not now. I've got people in the shop, Kelly. Never the right time, is it? My mother and I know nothing about her. Thanks for coming. I don't intend this to be a formal meeting, no minutes taken. There can't be of these two are here. I mean, if the future of Home Farm is to be discussed, then I insist Mr and Mrs Marchant leave the room. Be quiet, Chris. Listen to Zoe. You're just prolonging the agony. And you know what that agony is, dear? You? You're all in this together. If I might get on... If it's anything to do with the business, either they go or I do. Shut your mouth, Chris. God, please. Changes. The obvious one is, of course, my new position as chairman. A chairwoman, Tara. Girl power. See what I mean, Zoe? The stud farm partners are as thick as thieves. You said it changes, Tara. So far, you've only given us one. Yes. 
The day-to-day -day running of Home Farm will be left to my new managing director, Chris Tate. Whoa, 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 hang on, hang on. He shouldn't be touching that because he's an athlete in training. Oh, come on, Marlon, don't you start as well? Do I detect a note of mutiny? No, Eric, it's just a... Well, Will's a mate, right? And he's got a very important rugby game tomorrow. Yes, well, since when have I let personal grudges get in the way of business? Um, all the time? Well, perhaps, but that was yesterday. This is the new look part of the new look premises. Accents on youth, Marlon, and it's our job to cater to their energies, their optimism, their gullibility. The question is, you in or out? In. Good. And you can guarantee that you push the fast food devil quick for the next few days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, because I won't be here. I'm going to a house clearance in Shropshire. You be a good boy, otherwise I'll fire you on the spot and get somebody else. You're all art, Eric. Yes, I am, uh, aren't I? Mm. Hey, do you reckon your lads will pull it off tomorrow, do you? Oh, aye, cup's as good as ours. That is, if young Will Cairns turns up. I've coached the lad to perfection. Aye? Well, good luck. Look, I made just over 50 quid. Could do with a few more jumble sales. <laughs> I wish I could have called him Mandy Love, but I'm busy at the garage. Oh, it was a really good dooley. She would have enjoyed yourself. Mm. Only blot on the landscape, though, butching Uncle Zack. Flogging Diesel. Diesel? Aye. Not for long, though. Vicar chucked him out. Mr. Dingle, glad I've seen you. My apologies for quoting rules and regulations this morning. What can I get you, Vicar? Bitter, please. A pint. Mr. Dingle? Yeah, go on, then. But for our butch, I would have hung one on you. Vicar or no vicar. You thought you'd blown it, didn't you? My first decision as MD. I want you two off this property by midday tomorrow. Don't be stupid, Chris. What about James? Oh, you take him with you. I don't need him. <laughs> that eastern boundary's looking rather overgrown. He prunes the trees. Uh, I think Kim uses a firm in Skipton. I've got a dressing office if you want it. I'll mention it to Mr. Tate tomorrow. Tell him we've spoken. <sighs> right to you, Lady Oakwell. Thank you, Roy. Show your shoes. Stuffed. Your MD has just issued the most ridiculous instruction. You want Steve, James and me out of the house by noon tomorrow? Yes. So talk to him. Tell him it's impossible. Managing directors are there to manage, Kim. How would he look if I overruled Chris at this early stage? Sorry. 